الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى أزواجه وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has spared our lives to witness yet the most important days from the beginning of it to this very point which happens to be the Eid of the month of Dhul Hijjah. This indeed is a great blessing, a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses whom he bestows that favor. And alhamdulillah, he had given you and I which itself is something worthy of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that we should say alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illallah these are the days in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took oath with in the glorious quran that we stated the ayah in the arabic as well as last week's sermon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the very ten nights these nights are the most special nights in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the entire year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singled them and made them the most virtuous of all these. This is one of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. If one, like I said last week, misses Ramadan, misses the very last 10 nights of Ramadan, getting to do as much ibadah as he could in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting to you and I yet another opportunity. We are still in this very blessed days. So on that, we need to still be up and doing for the days are still remaining. And amazingly, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the night of majesty to be the most important night in the sights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Laylatul Qadr, but amazingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it hidden that nobody knows when that particular night is. Rather, it falls within the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. Unlike these very 10 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected certain days out of these very 10 and made them clear to us their importance and their virtue. The entire 10 nights or 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah are very virtuous. But more virtuous are the last three days. Talking about tomorrow, next, which is the 10th, then coupled with the following day, that is the 11th. La ilaha illallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed the night of majesty for you and I. But he made evident for us the day of Arafah as well as the day of Nahar and also the day of Qar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah which a Jew came to the Amir al-Mu'minin, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, and said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, revealed unto you is an ayah in which if it was us that received that revelation, then would have taken that day to be a day of celebration. Umar radiallahu an said to him, which is that very ayah? La ilaha illallah. A pointer to you and I that these very people understand the Quran even more than those very people who today call themselves Muslim. A Jew coming to Umar radiallahu an saying an ayah in your book which has been revealed to you. Unfortunately, he didn't understand that the ayah is also referring to him. A Jew, a non-Muslim, saying to Umar that there is an ayah in your book which is very, very paramount and important. It was revealed. And if it were to be revealed to us, then we would have taken that very day or that very ayah to be a very celebrated ayah. What does that tell you and I? It tells you that they understand the Quran even more than so many Muslims of today. Unfortunately, a Jew telling Umar that an ayah is very important that if it were us that received it, we would have celebrated that very day. Have you ever pondered over the ayat of the Quran and you were able to come up with an ayah that is very, very paramount and key to your life personally without having a narration from the Prophet ﷺ? Now this is a non-Muslim, a Jew coming to Umar, telling him that you have an ayah, which if it was revealed to us, would have taken that day to be a day of celebration. Umar said to him, what ayah are you talking about? Then that Jew said to Umar radiallahu an, the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, an ayah in Surah Ali Imran, this day I have akmaltu lakum deenakum, completed my, your religion for you, wa akmamtu alaykum ni'mati, and I have perfected my blessings upon you, wa radhitu lakum al-islam deena, 
and I've chosen Islam for you as a deen, a way of life. Umar said, by Allah, I know when that ayah was revealed, where it was revealed, and what day it was revealed. To make it clearer for you, it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Arafah, on the plain of Arafah, and it happens to be a Friday. Allahu Akbar. It happens to be a Friday. That was when Allah revealed this ayah. What is this ayah telling us? This day I have completed your religion for you and perfected my favors upon you and I've chosen for you Islam as a way of life. Islam being complete that day means that you cannot add anything to it. In fact, the scholars of Tafsir said, after this ayah was revealed, there was no ayah talking about ahkam that was revealed after that. Of course, so many, so many ayats were revealed after that, but no ayah talking about of bringing a new hukum, a new form of judgment to the Prophet that was revealed after that ayah. Rather, other ayats, of course, we know the last ayah revealed is in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to remember the very day we return to him. So Umar radiallahu an told him that this ayah was revealed on the plain of Arafah, on the day of Arafah, and it happens to be a Friday. So you do not consider it revealed to you, and you said if it was upon you, you, have, you would have taken it as a day of celebration. You don't know that it is also a day of celebration to us, but our celebration differs from the way you celebrate. This very day of Arafah is the most important day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, you find other narrations talking about the following day to also be another important day in the sight of Allah. Another narration talking about it being the most virtuous day in the sight of Allah or amongst the very ten days. Of course, that does not contradict for they all work together, they all go together. The day of Arafah, the ninth of the month of Dhul-Hijjah, which inshallah would fall tomorrow. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you and I to be of those who witness that very day. It is a day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees more people from hellfire than any other day. So on that note, what preparation are you making to be of those that would be saved from the hellfire come tomorrow? What preparation are you making? What preparation am I making for that very day? Let us ask ourselves, imagine if someone would give you the opportunity or give you a minute or two to enter the most expensive shop that you can ever imagine, giving you just two minutes to pick whatever it is you want for free. What would it be that you will take? Ask yourself. Better than that is tomorrow. For you and I, better than the dunya and what it contains is tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you and I to see today and I pray that he chooses you and I to see tomorrow. But what preparation are we making for that very tomorrow? Have we ever sat and thought of the, the kind of du'as that we are supposed to make tomorrow? Have we ever thought of the kind of ibadats that we are supposed to conduct tomorrow? Have we ever thought of not even thinking of sinning, committing an iota of sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tomorrow being the greatest day amongst the very ten days of the month of the hijjah? This is what we should do, O believers. If you have not thought of anything, then after this Jumu'ah, after this Friday, begin to think of what you would do tomorrow. For tomorrow is going to be a special day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would choose only those He chooses. So if you happen to be among those very that are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then prepare for it. What are these preparations, O believers? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most important deed that a believer should look forward to doing tomorrow is fasting that very day. Of course, we've been seeing clips, reading texts, telling us that we shouldn't fast on a Saturday. Yes, there is a narration. Of course, some of the scholars are even saying the narration has some defects in it. But assuming it doesn't have defect in it, Uthaymin rahimahullah had written a very powerful book and he explained on the scenarios of fasting a Saturday how it can be prohibited and how it can be allowed. He gave five different scenarios and I want you to listen attentively. Maybe perchance you came across that very clip. Perchance you read that very text telling you not to fast tomorrow because it's Saturday. 
The reality is, majority of the scholars are of the opinion that whatever day it falls, so long it's Arafah, then you can fast it. Uthaymin rahimahullah, he mentions that these scenarios could be fasting, the obligatory fasting. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever it is, so long it falls on a Saturday, if it's an obligatory fasting, you must fast as a, as a Muslim. So long you are sound in health. That is one. Number two, expiation. Fasting of expiation, kafara, also can be fasted on a Saturday. As well as fasting, the very uh, paying back the one that you have missed in the month of Ramadan. You are allowed to fast on a Saturday. So that's the first scenario. The second scenario, Ibn Uthaymin said, is fasting the Friday before it, then fasting it. For once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he saw Juwairiya, his wife, radiallahu anha. Imam al-Bukhari brought the narration. She was fasting on a Friday and he asked, you are fasting today? She said, yes. Did you fast yesterday? She said, no. Are you intending to fast tomorrow? She said, no. He said, then find whatever it is that you can find, even if it is a stick, and break your fasting. What is this telling us? It's telling us that if you want to fast on Saturday, then you fast the Friday before it. So that gives you the permissibility to fast on a Saturday. If you fast today, then you can fast on Saturday. Then the third scenario is the scenario where a special day of the year comes on that very Saturday. And we have different special days as Muslims. We have the Ayyamu Tashriq. Sorry, Afwan, we have the day of Arafah, which would be tomorrow. We have the Taswa and Ashura in the month of Muharram. We also have the Ayyamu Al-Bid. These are all special days within the year, within a month, that you are allowed to fast whenever it is, whatever day it falls. If Taswa and Ashura should fall on a Saturday and Friday, then you can fast it. If it should fall on a Sunday and Saturday, you fast it. There is no problem about that. Why? Because preference is given to the name that carries the name of the year than the name of the week. What I'm trying to say is, if specifically single-handedly the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam calls today Friday, possibly it falls on the 9th and 10th of Muharram, which is Taswa and Ashura. If today happens to be the 9th or the 10th of the month of Muharram, then we wouldn't call it a Friday. Rather, we would call it the day of Taswa or the day of Ashura. In fact, one of my scholars last Tuesday we had a class with him. He was discussing regarding, in fact, the day of Friday itself. We call it Yawmul Jumu'ah. In reality, the name is not Jumu'ah. The name given to that very, this very day is Yawmul Aruba. That's the original name of a Friday. But Islam came and gave it the day of Jumu'ah. Why? Because we gather together. So if it has a special name, if it has a special title given to it by Allah and His Messenger, then you can fast it. So tomorrow is not just a Saturday. It is the day of Arafah. So the name of the year precedes the name of the week. So that is the third scenario. The scenario in which the name of the day changes because of an important event of the year that would happen that very day. So Arafah is falling on tomorrow. So the name of Arafah precedes and carries more weight than the name Saturday that the name as Sabd. So on that note, Uthaymin said you can fast it, for it has a special value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the fourth scenario is the scenario in which you have an ada, a culture, a habitual practice which you do independently. Fasting the days, the fasting the fasting of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. You fast today and you live tomorrow. You fast every other day. So if you fasted yesterday, being a Thursday, so you wouldn't fast today, then what would happen tomorrow? Because it's an ada, it's a culture, it's a habitual practice which you've taken. The fast of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam, you can fast your Saturday. These are the four scenarios that is permissible for you to fast. Then Uthaymin said the fifth scenario is the scenario whereby you singled out that very Saturday and make it a day of fasting. 
That is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is prohibiting. That is what prohibit, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibits that you don't fast on a Saturday. Wallahu a'lam. But this is the strongest of opinion taken by the scholars, majority of our scholars. So as believers, Saturday is not Saturday tomorrow. Rather, it is the day of Arafah. So as a believer, if you really, really understand the virtue of this very day of Arafah, then you should fast. Why should you fast, O believer? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it in a remarkable narration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever fasts that very day of Arafah, Allah expiates his sins. Allah forgives his sins of the year that preceded and the year that would come. Ya Allah, who would want to miss this opportunity? Who would want to miss the opportunity of his past sins being erased by Allah? Who would want to miss the opportunity of the coming year, his sins to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? La ilaha illallah. So do not miss fasting the day of Arafah. So do not miss out. The sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to erase, expiate for you and I, are the minor sins, not the major sins. For major sins, you need to sit down and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Then Allah forgives you. So of course you can also use tomorrow, being the day of Arafah, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely for your major sins. And fasting it expiates your minor sins of the year that preceded and the year to come. Maybe you'll be asking, what about the year that we are in? Did we not fast the month of Ramadan? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who fasts Ramadan, his sins are forgiven. Man sama Ramadana imanan wa ahtisaban, ghufira lahu ma tapaddama min dhambi. All his sins are forgiven. So you have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the opportunity of having your sins of three years being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for fasting the great day of tomorrow. So do not miss out fasting tomorrow, the day of Arafah. Another thing that is expected of a believer to do on that very day, which is Arafah tomorrow, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said it in a remarkable narration that the greatest of dua is the dua of the day of Arafah. Mark the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said the greatest dua is the dua of the day of Arafah. He didn't say the dua that is done on the plain of Arafah. Rather, he said the day of Arafah. So it's not restricted to only those performing Hajj. It extends to you and I. That is the greatest day in which you can make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That would be the greatest dua you would make. And you shouldn't select the dua you would do. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us the dua which is the best. What is that dua? He said, it is the dua that myself and the Prophet that came before me did. And what was that? He said, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. We may think it's simple, but it's one of the most powerful statements you can make. Remember, it is the statement in which admits a person into Islam. Imam al-Baji explained in this hadith. He said, perhaps the reason why the Prophet wasallam said it is the greatest dua is because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration, he tells us, Abdalul dhikr la ilaha illallah wa afdalul dua alhamdulillah. So, making excessive dua on the day of Arafah, specifically making this very statement, la ilaha illallah wa adahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. When you make this, then you've also done another prophetic teaching of the day of Arafah. Another thing a believer is expected to do on the day of Arafah, O believer, is that we should by all means stay away from whatever it is that calls upon us the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it is one of the most important days in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being the most important day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means whatever act of ibadah you will do is considered great in the sight of Allah. In the same manner, whatever act of sin one would commit on that very day 
would be sin very great in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So stay away from sinning. In fact, if you can, seclude yourself and put away everything that may distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why majority of the scholars of the past, when the day of Arafah comes, what they do is they select a particular place where nobody even knows them and they dedicate their lives on, on that very day for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, the remaining days as well, it should be. But specifically for the day of Arafah, they do not engage or interact as much with people. Why? Because it is a special day. Also, another thing we should do is, as believers, commence the takbirat that we will end at the final day of Tashriq, Ayyamu Tashriq. That is, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. After every obligatory prayer, right from the Subhi prayer of tomorrow, commence it tomorrow and end it on the final day of Tashriq. That is Salatul Asr of the final day of Tashriq. This is the most popular and most accepted opinion by the scholars. Of course, so, some other scholars are saying from the day of uh, Eid, but majority of the scholars are of the opinion that you start it tomorrow, so commence tomorrow. These are the little I would say regarding Arafah, but there are so many things that we can do as believers. Let me move to the next part of the sermon, which has to do with our Ud here. I'm not going to say much on that, rather I would speak little with regards to the etiquettes of Ud here. Of course, the very day of Adha is the greatest day, day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the greatest day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the day of Nahar. Then, thumma yawma qarrin. Then the following day, that is the 11th day. So what are we supposed to do? For one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the opportunity to slaughter an animal, then he should slaughter. But from the very beginning of that very day, make sure you bathe yourself. Make yourself as clean as you can before proceeding to the mosque. Start with your takbirats right from your living home. In fact, immediately after you finish your bath, commence the takbirat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Until you get to the mosque, sit down and wait for the Imam without praying any nafila because the prayer itself is nafila. Continue your adhkar. You don't have to do it in unison. That is even innovation. You individually do your takbirats. When the Imam comes, then you stop. The moment the prayer is about to commence, you stop. And after the prayer, you sit and wait for the khutbah to finish. The Imam slaughters then you can depart to your houses. Of course, the Prophet ﷺ from the Sunnah is that the route he takes in going is not the same route he uses in coming back. So change your route when coming back. And as you do that, when you meet your fellow Muslim, congratulate them. Allahu minna wa minkum. For this is the practice of the Muslims right from the time of the Prophet ﷺ till this day. And when you come home, you slaughter your animal. If you have the chance, you eat from what you slaughter. For that is what the Prophet ﷺ did. Because he did not eat before going out. So do not eat before going out until you come back. And if you have the means, then you eat from what you have sacrificed. Then you divide the meat, of course, into three parts if you can. Then give a part as sadaqah. Give a part as gift. Then eat the remaining part with your family. Then visit your family and friends. So that you exchange the complementaries of this very great favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Then finally, the days of Tashriq. Ayyamu Tashriq are also very important. That is the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th of the very month of the Hijjah. These are known as Ayyamu Tashriq. They are also virtuous. They are sacred in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also calls them the very special days that we should not misbehave. Rather, we should consider them as the days of celebration. So we should eat in them, we should drink in them. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, make excessive the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this very days. For if you do that, then you have fulfilled what is expected of you as a believer in this very great month of Dhul Hijjah. That I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts every single act of ibadah that we have done, that we are going to do, and he makes it easy for us to see the following and more of it in the coming years. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everything that we have done and may He forgive us our shortcomings. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shada Allah ilaha illa anta wa astaghfirka wa atubu ilayk.